If we imagine that the world is a dream, then it follows that there is a dreamer dreaming it. If so, it is most likely that the dreamer is stuck inside that dream, as it turned into a nightmare, and he fell prey to the shadows that came forth. These shadows are the repressed pieces of the dreamer's mind, potential evil that probably at one time inhabited the true conscious throne room, but that, due to having been detected for what their potential was, prompted shame in the dreamer's self and were rejected, repressed, and cast down to the unconscious and subconscious. Dreams are states of mind where anything repressed and rejected can commune, so to speak, with the conscious. Therefore, again, if we imagine that the world is a dream, then in here we will be able to observe both the aspects that the conscious embraces and loves and those it rejects. The purpose of such middle ground is to confront the conscious with what would otherwise never be looked at again, hidden away from view in the oubliettes of the dreamer's castle dungeons. Potential skeletons in the closet that, although never gone past that potential state, would nevertheless be a gateway to evil in the dreamer's awake state, whatever that is. Imagine then that, in the dream, the rejected evil potential was so strong, such was the hate that brewed for the conscious that rejected them, that the middle ground itself, that is, the dream setting, its nature, became a manifestation of their evil potential. Evil would then have found a place to dwell and roam free, even if only in a dream and that dream had evaded the dreamer's control and turned into a nightmare, Freddy Krueger style. Now Freddy Krueger was, in the movie story, a murderous pedophile who originally was hunted down for his crimes by the children's parents and burned to death. What is not shown in that story is that a manifestation such as that an evil that so ashamed, hurt and revolted that otherwise idyllic community, would have had no place or breathing room to grow and manifest if it did not fit a strong community immoral potential. There is conscious, which is what we are aware of, and often what we want to be aware of, because we are in one way or another justly or unjustly proud of it. And then there is the unconscious and subconscious, which is where these rejected ignorance and evil potentials are respectively sent to. These are hells. Now this subconscious hell can only come to the fore to harass at first, and then to take over, if and only if a gateway is opened by the conscious. So someone opened the door for Freddy Krueger. And for that gateway to be opened, at least one angel must fall, so to speak. That is, a seemingly perfect and entirely accepted member of the conscious realm must at one point listen to that evil potential whisper temptations and act upon it. Calling it to itself, and tempt and convince others of its kind that are compatible with his same potential unmanifested evil to follow suit. Rebellion, yes, but a rebellion that sprouts out of unseen seeds beneath the surface. And even when they sprout, only a focused, alert and disciplined observer may be able to discern if, using an analogy from the book the Little Prince by Saint-Exupéry. It is a rose bush or a baobab that is sprouting, if it is coming from a good seed or a bad seed. Isn't it true that sheep eat bushes? Yes, that's right. Oh, I'm glad. I didn't understand why it was so important that sheep should eat bushes, 
But the little prince added, And therefore they eat baobabs too? I pointed out to the little prince that baobabs are not bushes, but trees as tall as churches, and that even if he took a whole herd of elephants back to his planet, that herd couldn't finish off a single baobab. The idea of the herd of elephants made the little prince laugh. We'd have to pile them on top of one another. But he observed perceptively. Before they grow big, baobabs start out by being little. True enough. But why do you want your sheep to eat little baobabs? He answered. Oh, come on, you know. As if we were talking about something quite obvious. And I was forced to make a great mental effort to understand this problem all by myself. And in fact, on the little prince's planet there were, as on all planets, good plants and bad plants. The good plants come from good seeds and the bad plants from bad seeds. But the seeds are invisible. They sleep in the secrecy of the ground until one of them decides to wake up. Then it stretches and begins to sprout, quite timidly at first, a charming, harmless little twig reaching toward the sun. If it's a radish seed or a rosebush seed, you can let it sprout all it likes. But if it's the seed of a bad plant, you must pull the plant up right away, as soon as you can recognize it. As it happens, there were terrible seeds on the little prince's planet. Baobab seeds. The planet's soil was infested with them. Now, if you attend to a baobab too late, you can never get rid of it again. It overgrows the whole planet. Its roots pierce right through. And if the planet is too small, and if there are too many baobabs, they make it burst into pieces. It's a question of discipline, the little prince told me later on. When you've finished washing and dressing each morning, you must tend your planet. You must be sure you pull up the baobabs regularly, as soon as you can tell them apart from the rose bushes, which they closely resemble when they are very young. It is very tedious work, but very easy. And one day he advised me to do my best to make a beautiful drawing for the edification of the children where I live. If they travel someday, he told me. It could be useful to them. Sometimes there's no harm in postponing your work until later. But with baobabs, it's always a catastrophe. I knew one planet that was inhabited by a lazy man. He had neglected three bushes. So, that is our moral prerogative and our responsibility, as characters in this entanglement of scripts. In dreams, characters are potentials of the dreamer, made manifest within the setting of that middle ground, or main script. They will be imbued with both the rosebush seeds and the baobab seeds hidden within their soul soil. It is up to us. Option one is to tend to that soil and promote the growth of only the good seeds, which our true consciousness is rightly happy to see grow, while identifying and removing the bad seeds, of which our true consciousness is disgusted and ashamed. Option two is to neglect it altogether, get voluntarily distracted by meaninglessness, ignore each and every sign and allow the bad seeds to reach full growth and consume all of the soul of our assigned character. And option three is even worse. To outright starve the good seeds and instead water and feed the bad ones, purposeful and voluntarily. Option one will lead to the character in the dream showing that it is actually aligned to the conscious and not to the destructive rebellion. The character is saved, yes, also the IT terminology of to save, like in a file, and it is brought back to the awakened state of the dreamer's conscious. This is because it showed itself compatible with that awakened conscious state. Option two will lead to the character in the dream showing that it manifests no will at all which is revealed by not making a choice and always following the given script. 
the character is aligned to the unconscious because it shows no willing sign or compatibility with awareness itself. Option 3 will lead to the character in the dream showing that it manifests a will to rebel, to destroy, to hate the conscious. The character is then aligned with the subconscious, which is, again, the oubliette of the repressed evil, shameful potential. Those who are more compatible with option one get a special assistance, a therapist, so to speak, coming in from truth to guide the conscious shards stuck in the dreamer's nightmare, shattered in countless pieces, back to focusing on that option one, on choosing to tend for the good seeds of his own soul planet, using the little princess terminology, in the faith that they as characters are far more than what they see, both morally and essentially. It is a therapeutic intervention that comes to save the characters that are compatible and that make themselves compatible back to the throne room of the conscious awakened truth. We are, therefore, living through an amalgamation of contradicting gradual scripts, some lower that pull us to confusion and rebellion against truth, some higher that link us to a seemingly unimaginable state of communion with that truth. Our only responsibility is to choose, not a choice arrived at through fear, nor submersion into any of the other temptations, but by facing them for what they are. If we imagine that the world is a dream, that fluctuates between idyllic and nightmarish, then we are characters in it and we hold both seeds in our soul's soil. The disease of the rebellious repressed and the healing of the intervening, saving therapist. Our choice, our moral choice, our voluntary choice is all that matters in this matter. Life is but a dream, but a dream that matters. Run.